You know what the dangerous thing about this cocktail is? Mm. Well, I'm probably about halfway done, and I already want another one. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. We have another guest for the show tonight. She is a burlesque performer and a model, lingerie, fetish, pinup, all kinds of different things, but I would love to bring my good friend, Miss Sugar Pepper Jones, onto the show. Hello, hello. there. Oh, hello. Good to see you. Thanks. This is the first time you've been on the show. I've never been on this show before. Correct. Never been on the show before. We have worked together for a couple years now, mm -hmm. shooting all kinds of different photos, lingerie and pinup and some beach stuff. But then I've, I've even shot you at some of your performances. Yeah, you've been to a couple of my shows. Mm -hmm. At the Bell Book and Candle show, mm -hmm. where witches hang out. Yeah, it's at El Cid, really historical venue. Yeah, you told and me all about it. I did, and actually, El Cid used to be um, a jail-themed restaurant in the '40s. That sounds fun. Yeah. Tonight we're going to make a cocktail from the 1940s, which will go nicely with your little ensemble here. Very 1940s. This cocktail is from Don the Beachcomber in Hollywood, California, and it's called the Rum Barrel. You want to make the drink? Let's make the drink. Okay. For this cocktail, we will be using oranges, grapefruit. Straight from the tree. It still has the leaves on it. Mm -hmm. Limes. Light Puerto Rican rum. We're going to be using the Don Q Crystal. Or Crystal. Crystal. Gold Jamaican rum. Demerara rum. Angostura bitters. Absinthe. My favorite. Grenadine from Small Hands. Pineapple juice. Honey syrup which is just one part water to one part honey, falernum, and allspice dram. To start this cocktail, let's start by squeezing an orange. Okay, you wanna cut that thing in half? Right down the side there, huh? This is a really sharp knife. Yes, it's ceramic. All right, so we are looking for one ounce of orange juice. Yeah, there you go. If you squeeze towards the ends, it'll be a little bit easier for you. That's okay. good. You can use the other one too. Huh. Using the old knife there to get that out, huh? <laughs> so one ounce. Oh, one ounce each. So we gotta do two ounces. Yeah. Oh, hmm. Kind of missed. Shit. Oh god. Half an ounce got on the table. <laughs> we could have used that other half ounce. Let me. Okay, let me just do something real quick because I want to be able to save this orange for later. So I'm gonna cut a couple slices for garnish. There's one. Thinking ahead. Probably should have a longer knife for this. Okay, and then let's take this and we'll get the rest of that second ounce of rum. Orange juice. Second ounce of orange juice. <laughs> We're not onto the rum yet. Pause. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. So I just realized that we're gonna make separate cocktails because this is a really, this is a big drink. And so I wanted to make, I wanted to make the biggest possible cocktail for the smallest possible guest that I've had. <laughs> Am I the smallest? You might be the smallest. You're smaller than Big Biff. <laughs> so there's one ounce each of orange juice. Let's go on to the lime. Okay, cut that guy in half. Usually a lime will produce about an ounce of, of rum. Why do I keep saying rum? Usually a lime will produce about an ounce of lime juice, but this is a gigantic lime. So I'm hoping that it's gonna do a couple ounces for us. Use the silver one for this, please. Perfect. Okay, so okay. let's do it right here. One. So yeah, go for one. <clears throat> go a little bit lower. Bring, bring your uh, squeezer down a little bit. There you go. Okay, wait, and before you take it away, tilt it into there. Yeah. Okay, so there's one ounce of lime juice for this one. I really like using that knife for that, huh? Ooh. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Okay, there is one ounce of lime juice. Okay, cool, so let's move on to the grapefruit. This is literally just plucked from <laughs> Literally just plucked from my neighbor's tree, but they're cool with it, so I don't get all weird, you know? They know about this show. Yeah, they know about the show. I don't think they know about the show. They don't need to know that. So this is kind of a small grapefruit. All of the original Don the Beachcomber and, and Trader Vic cocktails were using white grapefruit. So if you can get a hold of white grapefruit, it makes a big difference. That is... <laughs> try to keep it all in the, uh, the thing. 
<laughs> All right, so it looks like this grapefruit's not gonna do as, as much uh, juice as we'd hoped. Bummer. Does this really get all of the juice out though? I feel like there's some left in there. I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of all I've ever used. Ugh. Oh man. Okay, wait, <laughs> jeez. You can see your breath. It is cold in the breezeway. Okay, stop there. That's one ounce. Ooh. Okay, so one ounce in this guy, and then we are gonna need another grapefruit. Okay, stand by. It looks like there's juice, but there's none. Okay. Oh my god. Here's another grapefruit. I know we should have used this from the okay, beginning. This is another one. one. <laughs> yeah. I think you might have to strain this one. Okay. <laughs> Man, that is hard oh, to squeeze. Okay, so lots there's of juice in that one. Yeah, there's the ounce right there. And that will go into this guy. There are like a million ingredients to this drink. We are going to be using this pineapple juice for the pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. <laughs> if you're gonna use this, be sure to shake it so that you don't get uh, everything settling there. Oh, thank you. Okay, the interesting thing about this recipe is everything's about one ounce. So there's one ounce. I'm gonna pour that into this guy. And there's one ounce there. And that is the other tin. Now, a lot of people have said online that Trader Joe's makes a great pineapple juice that's better than this. I haven't tried that, but that is a thing. So you don't need to mention it in the comments below. I already know about it. Did I sound like a jerk? Yeah, a little. <laughs> um, Your Joe's makes a better one. So they say. <laughs> okay, so I make my own honey syrup. It's super simple. You just bring some water up to kind of a simmer on your stove. And then the amount of water that you have in the, in the pan, you add the same amount of honey. Okay. It's easier to measure it just in like a measuring cup. Okay. One ounce in each tin, please. Mm, smells good. It smells super good. Waterier than you would expect probably all the water that's in it. And another ounce. Gonna be a super honey, honey-y one. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the uh, light rum, and it's gonna be another one ounce per cocktail. Ooh, this is a fresh bottle. What does it smell like? Rum. One ounce. And one ounce. All right, so next we're gonna do the uh, gold Jamaican rum. And I love Hamilton rums. I think he does a great job. It, all of his rums are super fragrant. Oh yeah. That is so good. One ounce? Yeah, one ounce. Yes. One ounce, and then in the other tin, all over the bar. <laughs> Just a few drops. Another ounce. <laughs> Okay, and then the Demerar rum is gonna be two ounces per cocktail. And again, we're gonna use Hamilton. And Ed, if you wanna if you, if you wanna sponsor the show, feel free. Otherwise, I'll just keep using your rums for, oh, you like corks? I do. <laughs> Everybody likes corks. So two ounces per cocktail. Yeah, this is a four ounce, this is a four ounce rum party in a barrel, essentially. So it's kind of one of the stronger cocktails. And in fact, when the Hula Girls first started playing Don the Beachcomber every month, like at the very beginning, they had a deal where you could get one food item or two cocktails. So my drummer who was new to the tiki scene, he would always get the two cocktails, but it was always two rum barrels. <laughs> and we'd play three sets of music. So three sets in an hour each, about three hours of music. Wow. Uh, usually around the second set, that second rum barrel started kind of Eventually, real quickly, we all decided that maybe Coors Light was the drink of the band. Because <laughs> rum barrels are not good for drums or guitars or singing. So, keep that in mind. I'd go for the two cocktails anyway. It's more fun. Uh, we are going to do one teaspoon of falernum. So the falernum lives over in this thing. And this is homemade falernum from a friend of mine. But I think Fee Brothers also makes a good falernum. Mm. I do love the taste of Falernum. And the way that you want to do this when you're pouring these kind of things is you want to pour them over something that is not the drink container. If you accidentally pour like a ton in, uh, it doesn't all go into your drink. You can probably go a little bit more than that. Oh God. <laughs> wow, that is perfect. <laughs> I am a baker, so being precise with your measurements is very important. It is. 
I kind of think baking is a little bit like cocktail making in that even a quarter ounce can really affect mm -hmm. what the drink tastes like. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite flavors in all of Tiki Land. This is, well, let me see what you think it smells like. Oh my gosh. It's kind of floral, but I can't quite place it. It's like cloves and cinnamon and nutmeg. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the allspice. Yeah, allspice. Okay, so same thing. Uh, do you want you want me to pour, and then you can okay. change roles here? Oh yeah, it is super nerve wracking, Whoa. isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> okay. 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 It's a beautiful color. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> like how you have to use two hands for that. <laughs> okay, let's see. And then this. Do you want to drink this? You do? I'll try it. Okay. Mm. Huh. Oh, that's so good. Uh, okay, we are also going to be doing one eighth of a teaspoon of grenadine. How the hell are we going to do this? Oh my god, it's this huge hole. How are you going to get just a few drops? Oh, there oh. you go. That was good. This should have a stopper on it. It should. See? Wow. So good. <laughs> okay. All right, so that was the grenadine. Now the absinthe. Six oh. drops of absinthe. In each one? In each one, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Wait, which one is mine? No, don't you add more. <laughs> oh, that was two. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. No, nope. seven. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, now we have to make sure that one is yours because I absinthe is not one of my favorite flavors. It's my favorite. Yeah, it's it's kind of like black licorice. Mm hmm. Yeah. What about um? Bitters. Oh yeah, Angostura bitters. Angostura. We do need to do one dash of Angostura bitters. So, a dash. I've seen your show. Oh. It's like this. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that was a this puny is, dash. So this is the way that <laughs> Kelly showed me from Trader Sands. Uh huh. That's a dash. Okay. If we have too much like Angostura bitters in here now. It's kind of one of the flavors of the Dawn of the Beachcomber stuff. It's like cinnamony and... Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the cocktail. What we are gonna do now is add in some ice and then hit it with the Hamilton Beach Mixer. <laughs> okay. And as always, this ice is from Sonic and it is just the best ice possible for cocktails or for tiki cocktails, let me say. It's the pebble ice. Also, Sonic, if you want to sponsor this show, <laughs> feel free. Yes, but I'm not going to eat any of your food. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Okay, and you know how to use that? Yeah, you just like hook it on. So you don't want to go any more than 10 seconds. Put your hand up on the other part there. Okay. Like on top. Yep. Oh. Hold on. Let's turn it up on high. See the switch? Yeah, and picture. Oh my god, he's freezing. Yeah, it gets cold. It's probably good. Okay, that one's yours because it's got the extra absinthe. It's also freezing. Right now. Yeah, it's cold in the breezeway right now. Yeah. We do this for you. Good. Yeah, that's good. Oh my god. Whoa. All right, and so Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach, California, for the short time that they were around, well, 10 years really, were good enough to create reproduction rum barrel mugs like in the style of the 1940s. So these will go in here. <laughs> big one. <laughs> that is a big drink. Perfect. And then we are gonna top it off with more ice. 
And you wanna do this with every tiki cocktail. You wanna have your glass totally full of ice. Let me get this stuff out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and we are going to uh, use Don the Beachcomber Swizzles. And we are going to use mint. I love mint. Do you know what the rule is with mint? Slap it. You release the aroma. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> yep. Okay, go ahead and put that in yours. Whoa, all of this goes in mine? Yeah, I've always been with kind of the idea that more mint is oh, so <laughs> better. I don't like using puny little sticks of mint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then that goes in there. Beautiful. And then we have the oranges that we cut earlier and I'm gonna just score these real quickly. Why don't we, you wanna put that on yours? How are we gonna do this thing? Can we stab that into it? Or is that weird? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're <laughs> going the wrong way. Wait, no, what are you... I got it, I got it. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right, so from the 1940s, this is Don the Beachcomber's rum barrel. Have a straw. You ready? Yeah, cheers. Mm. <laughs> Mm. That is the rum barrel. That is so good. It's very good. It's very fruity, but it definitely tastes like there's alcohol in there, but mm -hmm. but it's not like a bummer, like not not alcohol in a bad way, right? It's not overpowering. Mm -hmm. It's such a complex drink. It reminds me of a zombie in that you can kind of taste all the different things going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely tastes the orange mm -hmm. and the pineapple. Yeah, but then there's like a bitterness to it too, right? Mm -hmm. I don't taste the absinthe at all. And I put a little extra drop in mine. I don't taste it. Hmm. Is this a cocktail that you would order at a restaurant? Definitely. You would? Yeah, for sure. It's right up my alley. I know, it's really good. This is probably like a $20 cocktail because there's so much rum and stuff in it. Yeah, very good. Once again, thank you so much for joining us on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I want to thank my friend Sugar Pepper for joining us on the show. Oh, uh, follow my Instagram, Sugar Pepper Jones. Follow her Instagram. It's we, a lot of fun. Yeah, we took a bunch of new photos today. Not nude mm -hmm. photos, new photos. It's very different from what we usually shoot. So. Yeah. All right, so once again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. Aloha. So to start this cocktail, let's start by squeezing a, a uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Being too extra. <laughs> no, you're good. I usually order a dark and stormy. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, you know what's in a dark and stormy? Uh, ginger beer, rum. The end. Yeah, some people, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, people, some people put lime in a, in a dark and stormy also, but. Um, I usually get dark and stormies at TPT. Oh, you get the most simple cocktail at the one of the best mixology <laughs> tiki well, bars. I didn't know you then. So. Oh, that's true. And then we have also gone to Lono together before. Mm -hmm. Did you like Lono? I did, yeah. Yeah. It was very fun. They make the most elaborate cocktails, but they like put on a show for you while they're making them, at least with the cinnamon. Oh yeah, yeah. We walked by a table and the guy was dashing cinnamon on a flame. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. And Lono is on Hollywood Boulevard. I yeah. walked right past it. I didn't even know that. I know, it's like the kind of thing that you wouldn't notice if you didn't know that you're supposed to be going there. I walked right by and then you called my name and then the security actually stopped me. I was like, hey, I think this guy knows you. I did. What is your favorite tiki bar? Um, well, I don't really go to bars that often, or I didn't go to bars that often, but um, I guess I would say Lano. Lano? Because it was the most, the most uh, elaborate, I guess, with mm -hmm. the decorations. But I don't have a lot of experience in tiki bars, but we did go to that one at 
Sam's. Oh, Trader Sam's. Yeah. We did go to Trader Sam's mm -hmm. and Lono, and then you said you've been to the Tiki T. Mm -hmm. What about Pacific Seas? Oh, at Clifton's. Yeah. So I snuck into Pacific Seas before it was open with a couple burlesque dancers. Uh, uh, they were performing that night, so we snuck up to the top floor and we hung out in the boat. No before way. Before it was open, yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. Who were the other burlesque performers? Uh, should I name them? <laughs> I, I don't, I think the statute of limitations is probably up on trespassing into Pacific Seas. Some very prominent burlesque. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't know, off, off camera? Off camera? No, I, I don't want to name, I don't want to name drop any. Oh. But it was, it was and <sighs> this was back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess it had to have been. That was like four years ago. Five Four or five years ago, yeah, yeah because mm -hmm. the Hula Girls played there only, I think, for two years or something. Mm -hmm. But you never went there when it was open? No. No. We tried. I, yeah, we did. I forgot my ID. <laughs> yeah. That was such a fail. <laughs> we got to the door and yeah. I was like, you better finesse your way into this club because mm. there's a huge line. And so I called the general manager of all of Clifton's and I said, hey, there's a gigantic line. Can we please get, you know, in <laughs> without we waiting? Were, we were about to get in and I looked in my wallet and I did not have my ID. Yeah. So we found other places to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Maria. Although we didn't go that night, I do appreciate your hospitality. So I'm sorry, Maria. Hmm. Yeah. Oh God, I feel like this is so crazy. I'm so awkward. What is? Oh That's no, you're so fine. Awkward. I feel like I'm ruining this. You're What's in this? I don't know. It smells like candy. So you live in, a, can I say where you live? Yeah. Her address is. <laughs> so Sugar Pepper lives in Hollywood. Do you have a favorite restaurant in Hollywood? Um, I do. I have two Michelli's. favorites. Oh, this is getting awkward. <laughs> Michelli's, yeah, Michelli's is an old Italian restaurant. It's like one of the oldest restaurants in Hollywood, I, I think, where it they got like the singing piano player. Oh, and he's so lovely. Mm -hmm. Musa and Frank's is my other favorite in Hollywood. And from what I understand, because of the pandemic, after a hundred years of being in existence, they may be shutting their doors forever because they can't, they don't do patio dining or, and that'll be eight ounces of rum. So if you get two of these, you're on the way to Blackout Town, USA. I love that town. <laughs> All right. Did you fix your swizzle? Okay. Down. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, now Don. It's, now, it's, now it's backwards. <laughs> sorry, Don. Oh wait, no. Oh wait. I can't. How do you work this thing? I want to pierce through it like it's, you know, like a heart. With cute oh, there you go. Okay. That's what I should have done. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Splash them. Like it's Sea World. Ooh, hands are sticky. We are gonna do six dots. Six dots? Six six drops. Okay, so we, and we do need, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't yeah. know, what the hell is in this? Sugar, gelatin, oh, yeah. caramel, I don't know. Weird. Yeah. Oh, we should totally whip out the car magazine. Oh yeah. Do you guys see the episode with Justin Scard? That was a fun one. What a fun one. Back and watch that. Go back and watch all of them. Seriously, there's a lot of good content. I mean, if I do say so for myself. And I do. Like the show didn't stop because you went inside. I tell you, I'm like halfway through this drink and already I'm like, ooh, rum barrel. I wanted to mention, if you guys aren't aware, I'm the art director of a magazine called Car Culture Deluxe, as well as Old School Rods, but you can get this in the grocery stores in the liquor stores, Barnes and Noble, any place that you would normally get magazines, which seems crazy because magazines are basically like who buys magazines. But this is a magazine that you should buy because this magazine has been around for a long time. But since they brought me on, we've done a whole redesign. 
And you might remember Miss Brianna Ashley, who uh, has been on the show before. She's on the cover of this issue with my buddy Eric's 54 Chevy. And she looks stunning. She does look stunning. But at the beginning of pandemic time. Wait, no, do it what? again because I'm laughing. Oh, stop laughing. But at the beginning of pandemic time, I said, uh, hey, uh, sugar pepper girl. <laughs> what? Why is that? That's stupid. Not I was like, uh, you should be in this magazine. And she's like, yeah, okay. And so we decided that we were gonna shoot over at one of my favorite restaurants called Memphis. And because it was the beginning of pandemic time, like the whole parking lot was wide open. So there is the feature there of Miss Sugar Pepper out of focus in the background. And this 50, I think it's a 50 Ford. Yeah, 1950 Ford. I almost own this car. The guy was gonna trade me for the Econoline. Mm -hmm. And then I got kind of weird. I was like, I don't know. And now I really wish I would have traded for this shoebox. And there she is right there. How pretty, right? And so I shot the feature and she showed up and looked all pretty. And then um, it's, you know, what's crazy is this parking lot is now full of chairs and tables and tents. Um. So because of the whole outdoor dining thing. I don't know if this is still gonna be on newsstands by the time that we go, this video goes live, mm -hmm. but you can always order the back issues. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and she was the featured model. This is so amazing because I was having kind of a, a moment at the beginning of quarantine. And I thought that perhaps my modeling career was over, but I happen to have a spread in a really beautiful magazine. Mm. I'm really proud of it. So to have this come out during COVID when I thought perhaps my modeling career was over, really amazing. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. This magazine is circulated all over the United States as well as 18 other countries. It's really the last place for pinups to get any kind of nationwide, well, global exposure other than, you know, like the Instagram and all that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, my family pulled this out during Thanksgiving to uh, congratulate me on my feature in the magazine, so. It's very sweet. Yeah, it's a huge honor. Thank you so much for having me in the magazine. Yeah, thank you for being uh, in the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> The whole idea is like, keep print alive. And I think pretty soon here, we're gonna have our buddy uh, Murph, Murpho, <laughs> Murph, Murpho. Pretty soon we're gonna have our buddy Murpho on the show. And uh, he is the guy who owns a place in Texas called Murpho's um, Customs. He builds rad cars. He and his wife are the couple who produce these magazines now. They bought Car Culture Deluxe and they bought Old School Rods. And it's kind of the same kind of thing that I've always asked uh, Vincent and Magda from High Tide Recordings, like, why in the world would you want to start a record label? Like it sounds like a total, it sounds like an insane idea, starting a record label now. Yeah. And I asked him the same thing. I was like, why did you want to buy a print magazine? It seems like print is going away. It seems like an insane idea. And well, he was like, people get stoked to see their cars in print and models get stoked to see themselves in print. This is a dying medium. And uh, I think it's really important for people to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should get this magazine if you can, still, mm -hmm. when this comes out. It's a collector's item. <laughs> if you like cars, if you like women, grab your coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep print alive. Seriously, I mean, it's just so good. Thanks. Where's my paper? <laughs> <laughs> it. It's so nice. All right, I think, are we done? I don't know, are we? I think so. Should we talk about other stuff? What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Oh, maybe we should talk about our shoot today. What What was, uh, what did we do for our shoot today? We took some very high fashion photos. We shot through the cracked window of mine and my buddy Josh's 1960 Oldsmobile. And she got into the uh, front seat with all the spiders and um, other it was creatures. Worth it. Yeah, good photos, I think. Really beautiful lighting. Came out really well. So follow Miss Sugar Pepper Jones on Instagram at Sugar Pepper Jones. Mm -hmm. And follow Spike <laughs> at Spike in the Camera. Thank you. On Instagram. Mm. 
He's extremely talented. And sexy. What? Why is it? Why are you laughing? <laughs> because that doesn't matter. Oh my god! I feel like we could talk about a million things. What else can we talk? About? Oh. I don't know. All right, and we are. <laughs> oh, got a headache. <laughs> Brain freeze. Mm. You should definitely come on this show if you want to get a little bit drunk <laughs> off of these beautiful cocktails. Not all it's of you. so worth it. Wait, who are you talking to? Anyone who wants to be on the show. Not anybody. No, not just anybody. But make sure you dress up. Mm. Oh, no. We should turn the cameras off. Oh, man. Also, make sure you share the video. You should share the video because Spike deserves more views. Oh, thank you. Oranges. Do that again. I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> laugh. You just get, hold it up. Stop laughing. <laughs> okay. Go grab something else. Like the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. We uh, we went into a liquor store in Hollywood, and I, I like this is my favorite story of my life. Is and I think I. Life. Yeah. So we go into this liquor store or whatever, and. Uh, she, she goes up at the counter and this dude, she looked very cute. The dude behind the register goes to her, you look like a little dog. <laughs> and I swear to God, I almost couldn't stand on my two feet anymore. I, I could not stop laughing. Yeah, he called I you a little dog. I said, thank you so much. Wait, did you just call me a dog? <laughs> But then he said, oh no, you're cute, like a dog. Yeah, he must love dogs. I like dogs. You do look like a, like a Cocker Spaniel or something. <laughs> I it? told him I was gonna go back and visit him and I never did. I know, it's very cold of you. He's been waiting this whole time for, when is my little dog gonna come back? Do you think you look like a dog? Like, a, is there a certain dog that you would look like? I think I look like a dog. <laughs> I can't think of a single dog that I look like. You don't really. I could look like a pug. <laughs> That's a pug look. This is turning into a mess. <laughs> well, once again, thanks for joining us on Spike's Breezeway Cock. <laughs> Cock. Oh my God. Can't put that in the video. Once again, thank you much. What? <clears throat> I think it's time to turn the cameras off. You're just I'm getting fun now. <laughs>